Do you have a desire for a godly relationship? Or are you in a relationship and you want to honor God in the process? First of all, it would be good to discuss about what a godly relationship is before we talk about what a godly relationship look like. Specifically, a godly dating relationship is an intimate relationship between two single people, a lady and a guy, a man and a woman, who wants to honor God in the process. They want to obey God, keep to God's standard, keep to God's value, and keep to God's rules and principles. As the scripture says, that the whole duty of man is to fear God and to keep his commandments. So a godly relationship is an intimate relationship between two single people who agree and decide mutually to serve and fear God and keep God's commandments in regard to the context of the relationship that they have. So what then does a godly relationship look like? The number one goal of a godly relationship is to make God the center of the relationship. The truth is that you cannot have a godly relationship without valuing and prioritizing God, his presence, his principles, his rules, his standard, and the values that he has kept in his word. So a godly relationship cannot happen or cannot exist without God being the centerpiece of that relationship. So for you to be able to have God at the center of your relationship, it means you're gathering the aim of it at the core is in his name, which is to honor him and do everything that agrees to his word. Although a dating relationship is not marriage, but then it's intended to lead toward marriage in a godly way. So to have a good godly relationship, I think the analogy of the triangle has to be a part of it. Because as two single people, each individual must focus on God. By the time each look up to God for their security, for their identity, look up to God to complete them. Because the scripture says that we are complete in Christ. Then on the horizontal plane, we can unite together. At the moment that each of the person in the relationship look up to God, seek God, love God individually first, they will then be able to fuse together because their values would agree. They would be able to stay together horizontally and love each other, not based on a parasitic love, but a love that has a source. It is only at the point that they find their identity in Christ alone that they will be able to love each other in the right way and in the way that God ordains for it to be. A godly dating relationship is not about the idea of completion because you cannot complete anybody. You are not one half looking for another half to complete you. You are single and whole as an individual. And you don't even need to meet someone that is not whole, which means broken and insecure and all of those things. Because if they are not whole, then it will be frustrating for you. You need someone that is whole and complete, such that where the time you love them, whatever you can give is a compliment. So that whatever you can offer in a relationship is complimentary, but no something that will be sapping your own life, that will be sapping your own energy. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God, put to death. Therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. So the Bible is saying, now you are in Christ, you are seated in Christ, you are to look up to God. Each individual in a godly relationship has to focus on God, make God the center of the relationship. The way you make God the center of the relationship is to make God the center of your life as an individual because you must be godly before you can even have a godly relationship. The Bible says, put to death sexual immorality, impurities, lust. Because all of these things, if they are not put to death, if you don't allow to help you, relieve you of all these things, all these earthly desires and earthly natural cravings, it will affect your godly relationship. The pursuit of one another in relationship stems from the pursuit of God individually, from a place of personal and intimate relationship with God that draws you closer to God, not apart from him. Jesus said, I am divine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. 
Apart from me, you can do nothing. I love this word because apart from God at the center of your relationship, you can do nothing godly in that relationship. Apart from him, you abiding in him as an individual, knowing that you are a branch from a tree. How can a branch survive from the stem, from its source? So you cannot do anything without having God at the center of your relationship. Because when he said, without me, you can do nothing. Seriously, you can do nothing without him. The number two goal of what a godly relationship looks like is define boundaries through the lens of the word of God, not culture. We know that Hollywood and all media have their predictions and their depictions of what a relationship looks like. Because people can just meet today and at the end of the day, they are already sleeping together. They barely know each other or know where each other comes from. But they are only attached to each other physically. So the only assessment they have of each other is the physical assessment of, oh, you are attractive, you are this and you are that. But then in a godly relationship, there has to be defined boundaries. Since you've already put God at the center of the relationship, your boundaries have to come from the lens of the scriptures, not the lens of the culture. You cannot have a godly relationship and just want to do what is okay for you or do what is good for you. That kind of advice cannot stick in a godly relationship because God is not cool with what you are cool with. His word is the standard. His word defines what is of value to him. So you cannot say, do what is okay for you. But instead, do and want what is honorable in God's eyes. So when we talk about boundaries, we look at the physical boundaries of touch, romance, kissing, hugging, caressing, and all types of physical activity in a relationship. So you do not have to allow the culture to define what you should do or what you should not do based on are you cool with it, are you good with it, but no, is it honoring to God? Because you could be good with kissing and then it's just one person that is good with that, the other person is being led on. So we find out that when it comes to this aspect, most Christians ask how far is too far? As if you're standing at the edge of the water, trying to test the water to know how deep is it? How deep is it from here? You can't just stand at the edge of the water and be tiptoeing around it to know how deep is it from here? How deep is it from here? How far is too far? That mindset is not a mindset that wants to honor God. But why are you doing it should be the question. Why am I doing this and where is it leading to? If I decide to start kissing in a relationship, why am I kissing? And where is this leading to? Because you can't start kissing someone in a relationship that you know that you're not ready to even commit in the next two years. Where are you going to? Okay, you just want to give yourself the physical satisfaction that your body needs. That's not godly. Romance and every physical touch is a progressive state that leads from one level to a deeper level. If you start touching, by the time you start touching, it's leading you to a deeper level of intimacy. So where are you going to by the time you are going deeper in this? What is it leading to? Duffy Robin said, You can't spend time heating up hormones by indulging in petting and expect nothing to come out of it. So because every act of this is heating up your hormones, it's arousing those things in you, the passion for these things, that you are supposed to keep it till it's time. Like Sons of Solomon says, do not awaken love until it is time. What about this physical touch? What are the boundaries that you're setting around it to know that I'm honoring God, that my motive is right? If I'm hugging my partner, I'm not hugging, lusting already at her body, feeling like, oh, if not that God is holding me from doing this, I will just go in and start and have sex with her or something. There has to be a defined boundaries, which first of all, as an individual, it has to stem from your heart and your motive. Do you really want to honor God or do you just want to do this? Maybe to have something to say to people that, you know, I stayed in a relationship, we didn't have sex, but you didn't have sex, but every act of romance and intimacy, you went into testing every word. Proverbs 6, 27 says, can a man scoop a flame into his lap and not have his clothes catch on fire? So what are your boundaries? Because you must define what boundaries are helping and honoring to God. The culture and media has presented relationships with no boundaries. Just do whatever is okay for you. When it comes to the word of God, it says, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It does not belong to you. So honor God with your body. So God 
takes your body seriously. It's not yours. You can't just say, hey, it's my body. I, will do, I can do whatever I like to do with it. He bought you with a price. He paid the price for you to live and have a good life. God's will is for you to be holy. So stay away from all sexual sin. Then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion like the pagans who do not know God and his ways. The number three goal of what a godly relationship looks like. The depiction of love should be that of true love and friendship instead of obsession and infatuation. The kind of love that the culture and the media present is an obsessive love that is on the emotional high and then the emotional excitement is always on the high. And it's always an infatuated experience that, oh, you just see someone, you barely know the person and you start saying, oh, I love you because all you are focusing on is their body, their physique, what you see on the natural. Or somehow you could be driven by your lust, your sensual nature, which the scripture says you should put to death. So your love in a godly relationship should not be sensual or obsessive or infatuated, but it should be a true love that stems from God and a true friendship which you want to know this person and be of help to this person that you are in relationship with. An obsessive and an infatuated love is not godly because it is parasitic in nature. It is always taking and taking. And then at the end of the day, it's like, if you love me, have sex with me. If you love me, you will do this. It's manipulative at the tail end because you always use the love as a means of manipulation. If you love me, do this. If you love me, you should do this. So first, you should love God more than you love that person. It is obsessive when you say, I can't live without you. Honestly, you can live without anybody. But you know who you cannot live without? You can't live without God. Without him, without God, you cannot do anything. In him you live, in him you move, in him you have your being. So as a Christian, seriously, you can live without that person. Of course, if you've been through any kind of breakup, at first, because of the emotional attachment, you could feel so hard at the end of the day, when you are healed up, you see that you can move on and do other things and even love better because you've learned to have gathered enough knowledge. But a true love and friendship is based on giving and becoming your best self to not be toxic to each other. So that is what a godly relationship looks like. It looks like both people being selfless instead of being selfish. Both people seeking for the good of one another. Like 1 Corinthians 13 talks about this kind of love. So this kind of love is progressive and steadily growing deeper. What a godly relationship looks like. The focus should be on the health of the relationship and not on the longevity of the relationship. Most times people get into a relationship and they are thinking about keeping it for a longer period. But no, as a godly person, you should think about, is it healthy? Are we growing together? Are we learning more about each other? Is it toxic? You should ask yourself the questions. It should be about the health of the relationship and not just about how long is it, but how well is it? Are we doing this well? Better that you get to know the truth and maybe get to have enclosure if things are not going well early before the emotional attachment is enormous for you to talk about the health of that relationship you must involve honesty openness transparency and vulnerability in your conversation your communication and everything you should bring these things to the table to help for the health of the relationship which is i'm transparent to tell you about the things that i feel even when you do not ask a question i'm honest to tell you the truth when you ask a question i'm open to tell you about those things that you may hardly know or even know how to ask and i'm vulnerable to just be bare before you i'm taking a risk actually but then i'm doing that for the health of the relationship because if it's not going to work then we can pull back this talks about intentionality when you're talking about the health of the relationship it is very intentional. It takes work. So when you get into a relationship, you should not be bothered about how long the longevity of it, but how well is it healthy. What a godly, a godly relationship looks like is having no confidence in the flesh. Your confidence should not be on your flesh like, oh, I, I cannot fail. No, I cannot even fall a victim of that. Yeah, you cannot. If you're attracted to someone, don't go stay in one room with them. When you know that something could happen and then you're not open about it, you're just like, ah, nothing will happen. No confidence in the flesh because the flesh is a, is a traitor. Your flesh is a traitor and it can lead you 
to fall. So that all your confidence should be in Christ. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So do not trust yourself as scripture says, trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding in all your ways, which is everything, all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path, which is in your relationship and everything you get to do. Acknowledge God first. Be prayerful in every season of the relationship that you enter into. And then allow God to give you the peace that if things don't get to work out, seek for God's will and be open to the idea that if things don't get to work out, let it be that we have got nothing to lose, but we've learned better having to be together. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am Uwe Mekpan. This is my YouTube channel. If this video has been beneficial to you, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and follow up with other contents that will be coming your way. Thank you so much for watching. God bless. See you in the next video. Bye.